There continues to be a looming threat of a nuclear attack by Russia as it continues to invade Ukraine. But how strong is this threat by Vladimir Putin and how much of it is just nuclear bravado? Joining me now is international security expert from Canada, David Welch. David, good morning. Good morning to you. Um, thank you so much for being with us. How serious is the threat or is it all sabre rattling, do you think? It's all saber rattling and not serious if Vladimir Putin is rational, uh, if he is stressed out, emotional, uh, losing his capacity to make sound decisions. It's a very worrisome, dangerous situation. How dangerous? If they were to, and I want to stress to everybody, this is theoretical stuff, but if they were to, if Putin was to feel cornered, if he was to feel uh, irrational, um, where would he aim them? Because he's not going to aim them at Ukraine, is he? No, no, he, he wants his troops to be able to operate in Ukraine, so he doesn't want to have a, a radiated battlefield. Uh, this is an interesting question because nuclear forces are configured according to very detailed plans worked out in advance that anticipate certain kinds of scenarios. And I would be uh, stunned if there were a scenario that the Russian military planners have ever considered whereby Putin himself initiates the use of nuclear weapons when the, when the Russia is not actually under attack. Uh, Russian doctrine is to use them only for self-defense. Uh, so they would actually have to jury rig some kind of um, scenario and, and make a plans accordingly. The idea, I imagine, would be some sort of demonstration. I mean, you can't imagine that Putin would want to lead with massive kind of nuclear assault that would trigger uh, retaliation and result in the destruction not only of this country but of civilization. So that would be some kind of demonstration shot or series of demonstration shots. I wouldn't want to be the Russian planner whose job it was to try to pick those. Uh, I don't think I would want to pick capital cities uh, in decapitation efforts because I would want to have senior leaders in other countries to talk to to try to negotiate a settlement down the road. So I imagine it would be something like um, targeting a naval base or an airfield, uh, probably in Europe, I imagine, possibly in the United States. But it would be a reckless act uh, intended really only to signal a seriousness on Putin's part. And uh, what does he follow up with? Yeah, well, that, uh, it's, and that's it's just the, mystifying. Yeah, and that's the question. But also, what, how would the world respond? I mean, is there some kind of... Uh, agreement, or does the United States, for example, have a rule that if Russia fires one, they fire ten back? Uh, there's no such rule. Uh, there, there is a, a, basically a doctrine whereby you retaliate to armed attack. But there are interesting historical exceptions. There are some cases where countries have been attacked and have decided it's more prudent not to respond. Uh, one of my favorite examples is Israel during the first Gulf War in 1991. Uh, Saddam Hussein attacked Israel with Scud missiles repeatedly, and, and Israel did not retaliate. They resisted the temptation to retaliate. Uh, Denmark in World War II did not actively resist the Nazi invasion. They decided that that was pointless, and so they basically opened the borders to German occupation. <clears throat> We've seen a lot of prudent restraint on the part of uh, Biden and uh, other Western countries in the face of Putin's earlier nuclear alert. They clearly didn't want to signal that they took it all that seriously or that they wanted to increase tensions in return. But the pressure to retaliate if there's actually a nuclear attack on some Western base would be very, very intense. And it would be very curious to know what the conversation would be leading up to a decision whether or not to retaliate, and if so, how. Absolutely. And as you say, uh, a lot of the questions around who would go first, uh, whether it's even on the table, comes down to the state of mind of one Vladimir Putin. Thank you very much for your time this morning. We appreciate it, David. David Welch, international Very welcome. security expert with us from Canada.